Hey everybody, I'm Roy Canning, and we are back with more of my top 100 games of all time. We are in the top 30 now, and although the rest of my list is amazing and tons of fun games, when I look at all the games from here on out, I am like, holy smokes, I love these games. These games are all amazing. Most all of them I rate excellent, if not higher than that. Um, what's above a 10? I don't know. Anyway, I love these games, so let's get right into it. Um, so my first one here is Starship Samurai. This is a game from Plat Hat Games, which I feel like is an unsung gem. This game is a basically a space game where you're also trying to influence these different factions by area controlling different planets and playing different event cards. They're the cool thing about this game is basically the actions in this game. You have a token that has a 1 on it, a 2 on it, a 3, and a 4. And you have to choose which one of those you want to do. Do you want to move 4 ships? Or do you want to move, get 3 cards? Or do you want to do, like, different things with all of these different actions? And I just really enjoy the way that the actions work in this game. I really enjoy the fact that you're trying to gain influence over the different factions to gain points. And the area control in this is very interesting. Also, you're going to be drafting and recruiting these mechs at the beginning of the game and then using them to basically stomp on your opponent's ships. Um, it's an extremely simple game to play and I just feel like it's so underrated. This is one of those games that I love to bring out at cons and teach people just because I think a lot of people, not necessarily that they haven't heard of it, but like they haven't tried it out and it's just a lot of fun. Definitely a great Isaac Vega design that is Starship Samurai. My next one here is Kemet Blood and Sand. This is just a fun game just because the Egyptian theme is really cool, but then also the fact that it's very much just in your face. There are temporary victory points that you have over different areas that you're controlling, so you have to fight back and forth trying to steal these points from each other. But then there's also this kind of like tech tree of building up your different pyramids and unlocking different powers or maybe different monsters to be able to bring out onto the board. But then also you can find some like more stable victory points to push yourself up towards victory in this game. I definitely enjoy Kim at Blood and Sand. I've only played the newer version of the game, but I was very fond of it. And I think it's definitely worth a try if you enjoy area control games, which as you'll see in my top of my list are some of my favorite games of all time. I love area control. And this is just a solid, solid area control game. Kimmet Blood and Sand. My next one here is another 4X game. As you know, 4X is basically my favorite genre of board games in general, and this is Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy. I love Eclipse. I honestly I get a lot of junk for like not being as big a fan of Euro style games, but my favorite games are games that mix like Euro mechanics and then just have that fun like combat and Ameritrash feel of like being able to build up things and like be able to fight your opponents. This has area control in spades as you're different, controlling different areas, trying to do the economics of making sure your civilization has enough, getting science and technology to be able to upgrade, get new, get new technologies. Building out your ships is one of my favorite parts of this game is the fact that you're like, okay, they built that on their ship, so I need to do computers to get past that. Okay, now I'm gonna build this to do that. And one of the things that's a little bit frustrating in this game is sometimes you just build up so much stuff and don't get to utilize your ships as much as you would want um, because you're so busy like focusing on like when's the best time to attack or when's the best time to take things over. But I love Eclipse and the second um, Dawn for the Galaxy is an amazingly beautiful version of the game. I love Eclipse and I love Forest games in general. So yes, Eclipse. All right, my number 27 is a real-time game. This is a crazy chaotic real-time game of blasting your opponents away, and this is Project Elite. I love Project Elite, and I've played it multiple times this year, and I just really enjoy the way this game comes together. As you're trying to basically complete these different objectives on the board and make it so that the waves and waves of aliens that are coming don't get into your base or get into the spaces that'll knock you out of the game, but you're working together as a team, rolling frantically in real time. As you roll the alien symbol on the dice, you have to move those guys towards you. There's swarms and swarms worms coming out, but you're using all your different weapons and trying to find weapons to be able to just blow tons and tons of aliens away. It just feels satisfying. It's like, hit, knock this guy out. Hit, knock this guy out. Move a couple spaces. Go here. Hit, knock this guy out. Do this for the objective. It's very chaotic, very crazy, but a lot of fun to play. A bombastic um, cooperative game. I love Project Elite, and that's why it's so high on my top 100. All right, my next one here is a worker placement game, but this is a worker placement game with Vikings and combat and pressure luck in some ways. This is Champions of Midgard. I love Champions of Midgard. I love 
building up the different Viking dice as you're kind of building up your team of Vikings, collecting food and resources to be able to send them on voyages to go get points by fighting monsters, or you can go send them to the mountain to get points by fighting monsters. There's all sorts of different cool ways to try to get to your objective to get points in this game. I just love the way that kind of like you have these combat dice that represent different Vikings that you're putting on ships and going out to fight off things. Um, it's just a fun game. I mean, normally worker placement style games, overall, there's so, so many of them. I just like the ones that have combat mechanics. I like the ones that let you do exciting, interesting things with the things that you're building up. And I have a blast when I play Champions of Midgard, and I, I really enjoy the game so much, and that's why it's so high on my top 100. All right, my next one here is a game that I love, love, love. And there are several different versions of the game. Clank it is, but the one that I'm gonna put on my list, I love Clank Legacy. I love regular Clank. Clank in Space is okay for me, but I'm putting Clank Catacombs on the list. And this kind of combines all the Clank together, but Catacombs I have been digging on and I've played it so many times this year and over the past year. It's definitely one of my favorites for sure. I just like the way that not only are you doing the normal, like if you haven't played Clank Catacombs yet, you really should try it because it's like Clank where you're building up a deck of cards and you're using that deck to move around a board, but you're moving around a dungeon that basically is it's different every time you play. It's going to be all mixed up. And the further you dig into the dungeon, you're trying to find treasures. And then you're trying to get out before the dragon kills you. And all the other players, when they get out, they're going to be drawing more and more cubes from the bag for the dragon to kill you off. So it's kind of like this pressure look of how far deep into the dungeon do you want to go before running out to get your, your um, victory and get points and things like that. So somebody could run in and run out real quick and then you're going to be in a lot of trouble if you're way deep into the dungeon. But I've really enjoyed the way the deck building comes together for this. I love the combos of playing all the different cards out, which is always fun in deck building. But then also the presence of the board and the pressure luck. This game just comes together and gives you that like on a razor's edge, like running, trying to get out. You're like, oh man, I only have two hit points left. And you're able to make it across the finish line. It's always a blast to play. Clank Catacombs, I love it. All right, my next one here, I know is not gonna be on anyone else's list, but this is a game that is way up there for me, and this is the Rune Wars Miniatures game. I just love the way this game comes together. I have a massive amount of Rune Wars. I have them all stacked up across the top of my, my Calyx shelf that I have there. And I have like basically everything for the game I have at least one of, and I have tons of multiples for all the different factions. This is a game that is now defunct, but it is a basically a min miniatures game where you're building armies and you're basically doing like rows and flanks of armies. And basically depending on how many guys you have across the front is how many dice you, how many times you get to multiply the damage on your dice. And then how many rows you have back is how many rerolls you get, giving you that luck mitigation in the game. But there are tons of different upgrades. This gives you a little bit of that like X-Wing feel of like Tim movement but then the just the fantastic fantasy world that they've made for this rune wars miniatures game is a lot of fun i love the way the characters combo together i love the fact that it has dice faces that when you roll those they will trigger special abilities a lot of times they'll trigger special abilities on cards that you've given them to upgrade there's so many cool ways to build your army with the point buy system and i love the miniatures and the way they come together i hate the fact that this game is defunct and that like i don't really have anybody to play it with um but i've had a blast the times i played it i played in several little tournaments at a back when i lived up in north carolina and i just really enjoy the way this game comes together i just think the design is so solid on this and i really enjoy the initiative system each character you have a dial that you're dialing in and you're basically depending on the move you pick depends on the speed you're going to go and you're going to count down anybody have any twos anybody have any threes if i have any fours i have a four okay my go four goes first then your four will go okay fives your five goes okay i have a six sometimes you're like delaying your movement because you want them to run in and then you can attack them it's a lot about outthinking your opponent and it's just a solid design in this game i love the way it all comes together and that's why it's so high on my top 100 even though it's a game that's not out anymore, and even though I haven't gotten to play as much as I want to, I really enjoy the Rune Wars Miniatures game. It is a blast. All right, my next game here is another game that's currently out of print, and this is Shadows Over Camelot. I really enjoy how Shadows Over Camelot comes together. This is one of those first games that when I was... I've played board games and tabletop games my whole life, but when I started playing cooperative games, I played Shadows Over Camelot, and this was one of the first games that I saw that had like a hidden traitor 
or like that sort of thing in it. And it just kind of blew my mind how simple the game was, kind of like doing different poker hands almost to complete these quests, but working together in this Arthurian Legends like theme. It just works so well. It's just so much fun to play. And I've had so many games where like I was a traitor or I was on the other side accusing other people of being a traitor. And it's just interesting the juxtaposition of like the different sides of the game and just playing playing it out has just always been so much fun. I have so many fond memories of playing Shadows Over Camelot and what a game that I really want to get back to the table super soon because I feel like it works with a very wide player count but then also a wide variety of skill levels can play this game and I feel like you can bring new people in and out of this game really simple. Um, I love Shadows Over Camelot and that's why it's so high on my top 100. All right, my next game is a cooperative living card game. Um, this is Arkham Horror, the card game. I really enjoy Arkham Horror, the card game, and just the way that this game comes together. You're building a deck, but there's not a whole lot of deck building going on when you first build your deck. I guess there is now that there's tons and tons of cards. There's tons of um, zero level cards that you can build your deck with. But as you play the game, you slowly get experience points that allow you to put better cards in your deck. But the theme and the story that they're allowed to basically infuse into this game just feels so robust. And as you're playing through the campaign, normally I don't like campaigns, and that's probably why I haven't gotten this to the table as much as I would like, but the gameplay just makes it worth being so high on my list, just because the way that it all comes together, the theme that they're able to infuse into this, the way it's able to kind of like build up narrative as you go from game to game and carry over things that you did in one game will appear in another game. And then some of the mechanics they do of like making locations pop out of the deck or making these bad guys happen or just the story and the way they've made the mechanics work together has been a blast every single time I've played Arkham Harley card game. Such an amazing game. If you're interested in like Lovecraftian horror card game, cooperative game at all, and you like like deck building and things like that, definitely make sure to check this game out. It is a ton of fun to play, and it's very highly regarded by a lot of people, which should show it's an amazing game. That is Arkham Horror, the card game. Well, my number 21, this is the last one for today. And if anybody's counting, I haven't said blast too many times. So this game is in fact a blast. It is what I would call a blood rage blast. This is a lot of fun. Blood Rage is a great game. It's one of my favorites as far as area control goes. It's my favorite out of the trilogy of Eric Lang games. I really love Blood Rage. I love the drafting part of this game just is so huge as you're setting up your hand of cards, trying to figure out which cards to draft as they're coming around, figure out which cards not to give away to the other players, holding on to the correct stuff to be able to then execute those plans on the board to try to get as much glory as possible. And this is one of those games where losing a combat can be just as good as winning a combat. So kind of like knowing what your opponent is doing going into those. You might need to win very specific combats, need to lose other combats, need to figure those things out. Trying to make sure somebody doesn't get a powerful combo and letting them spam that sort of thing over and over again. Blocking off your opponents in different areas, making sure to pillage this and then run away and then maybe move back to go get that area for the quest that you have. It's always been a blast to play. I wish, I wish there was more Blood Rage cards for me to draft, more stuff for me to play this game. Um, this actually has slipped a decent amount. This used to be in my top 10. I have just played Blood Rage so much. I feel like I've seen everything this game has to offer and I can't really play Blood Rage with new people just because I've played it so much with other people um, along the way. But Blood Rage is a blast to play. It's a lot of fun. And there I said blast again. Oh my goodness. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me here on my top 100. It's always a fun time having you all join in together and see what games we're talking about, see what games we're super excited about. Let me know in the comments down below if there's a game that was part of this section that you really enjoy or a game that you haven't heard about that you really want to play. I bet none of you are playing Rune Wars, that's for sure. But anyway, if somebody wants me to bring it to a retreat or something like that, I should totally bring a setup of Rune Wars and just make somebody play it with me because I can probably get somebody to play it. I can teach it quite well. Anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing weekend. I hope you guys are having an awesome week. Um, we just came back from Dice Tower East, so that was a lot of fun playing games with everybody there. Anyway, I want to say thank you for joining me on these, and I'll see you on the next one.